Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Wisconsin. I'm back here now. Uh, Tennessee was fun. It's actually almost been a month since I've had this boat in the water, uh, since my Tennessee trip. But today we're going to be talking about late pre-spawn crappie and how they're very finicky when it comes to cold weather fronts that move in. It's the first week of May right now. They're trying to start spawning, but when you get these cold fronts moving in, they can start pushing back out. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to find them on side imaging and specifically what to look for on some sort of mapping system. So let's uh, go run to the other end of the lake here to where I know there's a massive spawning flat. Let's go find a school of crappie and I'll show you what they look like on side imaging. All right, so typically what happens on this part of the lake, you see this massive spawning flat. This is all shallow water, three to five feet of water. These crappie this time of year, we're in the first week of May. They're going to try and push up onto this flat to spawn as May progresses into June here. So last weekend we had a huge warm front on opening weekend of our big game species. Our bass, walleye, northern pike opened up and water temps warmed up to that low 50 degree mark. I'll show you right here. 56. So low to mid 50s I guess. And that pushes these crappie or these crappie want to try to go shallow. But we had a cold front come through. Right now it's 58 degrees outside. And a lot of times these crappie, what they'll do, they'll stack up on these, these edges of contours between 10 to 15 feet of water before that water temp gets to 60 degrees and they know it's safe to fully slide up and spawn. So right now I'm just gonna idle along the edge of this contour line here. And uh, you can see I got some waypoints of some brush piles that are actually marked right off the end of the contour. I'm just gonna idle around. I'm gonna show you what it looks like on side imaging, so. Oh, there we go. Zoom in on that. So you see all these shadows? We're in nine feet. See all those shadows from that, around this crib here? Those are all crappie stacked up. So that's what we're looking for just around 10 feet of water here. Let's see if there's any more. See all these little shadows? You can kind of see the highlights of them, but usually when it's in super shallow water like that, you want to look for the shadows for suspended fish. And that's what we're looking for right there. You got the brush pile or cribs right there and there, and then all of these are fish, these shadows sticking out. So that's what we're looking for. Let's go throw a buoy on one of these and uh, we'll get set up. All right, we got a buoy out there. And just so you guys can see what I'm actually looking at, you don't need the live scope because there's just so many fish stacked up. There's that little brush pile we scanned, about 10 feet of water, and there's just a big pile of fish there. These are these late pre-spawn fish. Um, they're gonna have bellies full of eggs right now. And uh, they're just setting up right on this little, little contour drop off, waiting for this water temp to warm up to closer to 60 and kind of hold there. And uh, these weather fronts, when they come through, these, it pushes these fish to deeper water. Again, that 10, 15 foot range. Now this time of year, these fish are definitely gonna be aggressive. Feeding up, here's what we got going on. Going with an eighth ounce ACC jig. And this is a crappie monster, a little curly tail. This is, I believe this is an Ozark smoke pattern. So we got, uh, Eight foot ACC. I like using this kind of rod when you're casting these smaller jigs and you need to get a little bit more distance with them. Gives you a lot more leverage. Going straight braid. We're gonna see if uh, that 10 pound braid affects them at all. I'm just gonna count it down about two seconds and slow retrieve it, let that curly tail do its thing. Oh, there's a tap. There's one. First cast. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna be very big. This lake tends to be about nine inch fish, but they're gonna be fat. Fat nine inchers. Look at the belly on this guy. He's a tiny fish, but look, yeah. These guys are ready for the spawn. Has a fat belly on a very small fish. See you, bud. They're super aggressive this time of year, which is why you probably can get away with a lot of different baits. I mean, you could throw some micro crank baits, some micro jerk baits, or the classic curly tail grub. Just slow retrieve it. And you don't even need to look at live scope. There's just so many fish down there. All you're feeling is the little taps. Whoops, there he was. Dang, I missed him. And if you miss one, you gotta let it fall back down there. Because oftentimes they'll, they'll feed on 
these dying bait fish that get hit by these white bass and or other predator species in this lake and they'll sit right under those schools of white bass and wait for those minnows, those dying minnows to fall down. There he is. Slow that retrieve down a little bit. Yeah, these guys aren't going to be that big, but there's a ton of them down there. If you don't like catching fish, I don't care if they're big or small. You gotta just love catching crappie, especially this time of year. Now that is a male. And let me show you why here in a second when I get this thing out of his mouth. So this guy's a male. You see the black in his belly here? Also, his belly's not full. But you see that black in, in his belly? Males will get a black belly during the spawn, where the females will still get that, uh, will still have that white belly, even on these black crappie. They also get really dark. You can see this black crappie gets really dark, especially on top. Um, but that's how you tell the difference between males and females during the, the spawning season. Up here in Wisconsin, it's typically in May. And they got that black belly. Those are the males. The white bellies on the female, or the females have that white belly, and they're going to be a lot, a lot bigger too. So, see you, buddy. There he is. Kind of wanted that one on the fall, didn't he? Well, when they're eating it, they're definitely eating it. They're not big though. Look, choke that thing down. Huge shout out to, uh, I'm gonna get this guy back. Yeah, it's another male. Huge shout out to Darren from the Bass Tank. For those of you that uh, saw my Tennessee series, you know that I had some issues with this on the on the Watts Bar Lake tournament. He walked me through how to reset the entire thing. And as you can see, it's been anchor locked this entire time, uh, right on this big school of crappie. I forgot, when, when I first got this thing, I loved it. And then I started having issues and I don't know why Garmin didn't put out like a, just a sheet of how to reset it. Probably because they want somebody called a Garmin tech. But once you reset this thing, it works just like brand new, so. Huge thank you to uh, Darren from the Bass Tank for that. These fish <laughs> are, there's so many fish down there. I mean, there's over a thousand crappie probably stacked up between this, this little point that comes out. And all they're doing is just waiting for this water temp to get up to that 60 degree mark. So they can push in shallow, make their beds and spawn. Some of them are gonna be spawning in this deeper stuff. You know, there's enough timber down there where they can spawn on the top of that. Um, but a lot of them, in the next, probably in the next week, week and a half here, they're going to be pushing shallow once these water temps get warmed up and making beds and we can start doing some sight fishing. Even though the water clarity on this lake is, it's probably like eight foot clarity, visibility. There's another one. Hit it on that pause. Man, they're well, I'm pretty close to right on top of them. There's a female. All right. So let's talk about what the female looks like. Man, they are. You think they're hungry? They're just choking it down. They're not big. I know they're not big. I know this one from Watts Bar Lake series catching, you know, pound and three quarter fish to catching. I, mean, I don't even know if these are three quarter pound fish. Probably not. All right, so this is a female. Ooh, stop, 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 stop. You can tell they got the fat belly, but you see they got the white belly. She's actually got eggs coming out right there. You can see them, but big belly and then the white belly. That is, that's your female crappie. These are, I mean, they'd be solid eaters. They're, I think they're about nine inch fish. Let's throw them on a bump board here real quick. And then we'll get her back. These are nine and a half. There's a nine, nine and a half inch crappie. Nothing giant, but they'd be solid eaters for Wisconsin up here. And they are, they're ready to do their thing. So when you're looking at buying a fish finder, and I know a lot of people, I get a lot of messages of first time, peop, first time fish finder buyers, I guess, sonar units. People kind of want the best bang for your buck. And $500 is kind of what I push for people that are looking to get into something. And the main reason for that is side imaging. You know, if you're spending 500 bucks, that sonar unit better have your 2D traditional sonar, better come with down imaging, 
better come with side imaging and it should come with some sort of mapping system as you guys could see the contour maps uh, on my Garmin unit. Now you're probably only gonna get a five or seven inch screen but having side imaging and having a mapping system helps out a lot to minimize water and be very efficient at finding these fish um, given you know where they're kind of going to be during specific times of the year. This time of year, late pre-spawn, they're setting up and staging. They're going to be back here for post-spawn. So for those of you in the southern states that are in post-spawn mode this time of year in early May, uh, they're going to be back to where they were pre-spawn, you know, late pre-spawn stuff. Uh, they just transition back out to deeper water as the summer months roll on. And being able to see them on side imaging, throw the buoys down, you, I just can't say enough about being able to look left and right of the boat instead of just down. And $500 is kind of the minimum you need to get into the meat of that sonar market. It's unfortunate because I know 500 bucks is a lot of money. It's five, a lot of money to me. And I, I believe me, I wish you could get a better sonar unit for 500 bucks, at least a bigger one, you know, a nine or 10 inch screen. But $500 is kind of what I would recommend to get into the meat of the sonar market and to actually give yourself a chance to explore these new lakes and uh, really break them down and have fun doing it. Catch a bunch of fish. There's one, there we go. Come here, bud. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for me this evening. I don't know if there's rain coming in tonight or not, but simple little uh, curly tail setup again promo code davis all caps 20 percent off at crappie monster and uh yeah that's another let's measure this guy this guy 10. Uh, nope another nine and a half inch fish well, that again that's a male black belly well if you have any questions about what kind of sonar you should get feel free to message me on either facebook or instagram i always appreciate hearing from you and people do message me on facebook mostly a lot of a lot of facebook messages about you know i got x amount of money here's my budget what's the uh the best sonar unit for that price and i'm more than willing to give my advice and because i know spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars on these sonar units it's it's a lot to take um you know, just emotionally, it's a lot to spend that much on a piece of fishing equipment, so I get it. Uh, but if you got any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. Appreciate you watching, as always. Hope you learned something today. These fish are going to be stacking up pre-spawn right on these big spawning flats, right on the edge of them. And uh, they're going to be here for probably about a week, come mid-May here. Uh, they're going to push up as these water temps warm into that 60 degree range and they're going to start doing their thing making their beds and we can do some sight fishing some bobber fishing i mean you can do a lot of different stuff once these fish get up to about five six feet of water or shallower uh, a lot of fun can be had during the crappie spawn so i'm going to get out of here appreciate you watching as always we'll see you